another Lightroom video editing tutorial from Charlotte Reeves. Um, this time we're going to be editing an image and we're going to be using the histogram to help us get a really nice exposure and colour and contrast. Uh, as you can see I've already edited most of Bert's session. Um, I've left this image unedited so we can go in there and do it from scratch so you can see all the steps involved and my thought process behind what I'm doing. So since these ones are already edited I could just copy and paste the settings straight onto there. But we're going to start completely from scratch. This is a complete raw image. Um, as you can see it's a little bit flat. Uh, it was shot in the shade so there's no bright sparkly sunshine other than over in the corner here. Um, and it's it's quite flat, it's got that sort of uh, mist over it that makes it look very low in contrast and just not very exciting overall. So when while I'm doing this I'm actually going to create a virtual copy and I'm going to edit the image first in one way and then using a different technique and then we're going to compare the two and have a look at the difference in the histograms between the two. So to start with I'm going to create a virtual copy. So you can do that by going up to photo create virtual copy. There's also a shortcut you can use there. So it's created an additional copy down here. So we're going to edit this one. So looking at the histogram up here, so the histogram if you're not familiar with it, uh, it's basically a way of visually displaying the data from the image. Um, towards the bottom here, this refers to the blacks in the image, what sort of information is in the blacks. This goes all the way through shadows, exposure highlights, and whites. So basically the more information that you've got at the bottom of the range is the more so the darker the image will be. Um, if you have uh, most of the graph located towards the top here it means it's going to be a mostly light kind of image. Um, as you can see right at the top here we've got uh, this section here which is clipped so we don't actually have any data in this area of the image and to see where that is in the actual image you can just hover over here and it'll show you it's mostly located in this corner here. So an interesting thing you can do actually uh, is crop the image and see if removing that will change the histogram. So the shortcut to crop an image is R on your keyboard. So I'm just going to, so watch the histogram as I do this, I'm just going to crop this Oops, don't mind me. Okay, so it's going to crop this, and you'll see that as we crop that white corner away, it actually changes the histogram and we get rid of those areas that are being clipped. So I'm just going to crop this in such a way that those bits are totally gone, so we don't have to worry about them. Okay. So I much prefer this crop because it sort of gets rid of all that extra sort of data at the top left and it's a much more pleasing composition. Um, I've left him over on the right hand side a little bit because he's looking over to this area of the image um, as I think that yeah makes it look like a, a nicely composed shot. Um, okay so looking at the histogram here you can see that we're now lacking a lot of data in this end of the graph so basically we don't have much detail in the whites and it indicates that the image is a little bit dark and a little bit low in contrast. So one way of fixing that up is to actually increase the exposure so that you have more data in those bright areas. So I'm just going to increase the exposure here. As you can see all the data moves up and we're finally getting towards the top here. So we've even still got a little bit of uh, missing data here and as you can see the image is a lot lighter and it still looks a little bit flat so it's not something that um, I would want to end up at for this image. Um, but we'll do a couple of other things and see if we can get it looking a bit better. So the main thing with this shot now I think it lacks in contrast so I'm going to just increase the contrast here, maybe increase it quite a bit and I think it definitely needs more blacks as well because there's not a lot of data down here as well. Most of it's located in this really sort of mid to light range so I'm just going to add a little bit more black. Okay, and also the image looks quite cold, which I think is distracting from it a lot. So I'm going to just increase the color temperature, so add a little bit more yellow in. Okay, so that's one way to edit the image. And 
that's done just by increasing the exposure, adding some blacks, adding some contrast and fixing up the white balance. Um, it's not probably what I'd uh, like for the image to end up looking like. Although, when you look at the histogram, it, um, it looks fairly good because you've got detail down here in the darks, you've got detail almost all the way to the top end in the lights here, and everything else distributed pretty sort of evenly, mostly towards the top end though, which would indicate it's quite a light image. So, what I'm going to do now is go back to the original and create a second virtual copy. So I'm just going to use the keyboard shortcut this time, which is Command and inverted commas. Okay, so I've now got a second copy of this image. So I'm going to go ahead and crop it in a similar way. So, whoops. Okay, crop it in a similar way. I'm not sure if it's exactly the same, it was pretty close. Okay, this time, as you can see again, we're missing a lot of data in, in the light area of the image again. But instead of increasing the exposure, I'm going to leave the exposure as it is and use the whites slider to try and get some data up there towards that end. So I'm just going to increase the whites. As you can see, this is creeping up here as I move the slider. And all the way up to the end. So what it's done is sort of flattened the, uh, flattened the graph out a little bit and distributed so that it's not lighten the image overall as exposure does it's just added some more lights to the image so color balance is the next thing that's bothering me so I'm just going to add a little warmth and as I add some yellow I'm starting to notice that this area is looking a bit green so I'm actually going to add a little more magenta as well so get that looking quite good Okay, now already I think this is a lot better than the first one that we did. And you can see the difference, just watch the histogram up here, you can see the difference in the histogram. So with this edit here, we've got all the data up in the top. With this one here, it's a lot more evenly distributed. We've got a nice range of tones rather than more sort of all up at the lighter end. So, okay, the second edit, what else can we do to make it nice shot. I'm actually going to add some shadows in here. So fill in the shadows a little bit and offset that by adding some more blacks. So adding the blacks is a good way of increasing the contrast but of course you don't want to uh, clip the blacks. So one way you can do that is actually hold down the alt key on your keyboard as you're moving the black slider and that will show you which parts of the image are being clipped. So holding the alt key Okay, so you can see up at the top right there, there's a whole big section there that's being clipped in the yellow and red range. And there's a few little spots on the actual dog. So if we can also get that same view overlaid on the image by going up here and seeing where the clipping's happening. So the alt, holding that alt and using the slider actually gives you more information because it gives you, divides it into colors, which colors in the blacks are being clipped. Okay, so I really don't mind if um, there's a little bit of clipping in these sorts of areas because they're not important areas of the image. So I think that's quite good for the blacks. Um, something that I do as a secondary kind of uh, way of getting more interest into the image is use the tone curve as well. So as you can see, I've added 100 whites, so I'm totally maxed out on the white slider here, but I still haven't quite reached the top of the graph here, so I would like to get a little bit more information up here. So I'm going to use the tone curve instead. So the sliders under the tone curve are actually similar to these ones here. They do a pretty similar thing. I just use it as an extra little way to, to boost colour and contrast into the image. So, um, so I'm going to add some lights here and watch the histogram as I'm doing this. See, it's gradually kind of moving data up to the lighter end, brightening the image, which is kind of what I like. It's quite good. Um, and we're not clipping any, which is good. However, there is a little bit here that I think really could benefit from having a little bit more detail. So I'm going to pull the highlights down a little bit. Just pulls them away from that end, and then I'm going to do it on this one as well. Okay, that's quite good. Um, I'm going to add a little bit of more to the darks, 
and offset that by taking the shadow slider down a little bit. Okay, so I don't mind the look of this. I'm not clipping too much of the blacks, which is nice. The image is a lot brighter, a lot more vibrant, better color, better white balance. And the last little thing I'm going to do is add a bit of clarity. I don't like to add too much because it can look a bit fake, especially when you've got a dog with wrinkles, deep wrinkles like this, because if you add too much clarity, it's just, ooh, it goes a bit overboard. So just a tiny bit of clarity and a little bit of vibrance, which is similar to saturation, but instead of saturating all the colors in the image or instead of saturating colors that are already saturated, so adding more, oversaturating, it tends to choose colors in the image that aren't quite as saturated and brings those ones up. So it adds more interest to the image. So a little bit of vibrance as well. Okay, so I'm actually reasonably happy with this shot. Um, Maybe still a little bit cold. I'll just add a little bit more warmth in there, and that really helps to sort of bring out these reds. Uh, another thing that I would do, you can either do this in Lightroom or Photoshop. Generally, um, if you can get away with doing it in Lightroom, I'll do it there. Otherwise, if it's a bit more extensive, I'll do it in Photoshop. But things like this. So I'm actually going to get rid of this. So I'm going to use the, uh, what's it called? I'm not sure what it's called, but you press Q on the keyboard and it's sort of like a heel tool. Change the brush size and I'm just going to grab that. It's taken it from up there, but I'm going to take it from over here. Okay, so that's got rid of that little distracting thing over there. Um, and also what I want to do is get rid of all this dirt and marks and all that sort of things on the sculpture behind the dog. So you can either fiddle around and do that in Lightroom or just do it in Photoshop. If you wanted to do it in Lightroom, just stick the Q key on the keyboard again to switch to this tool. Um, and then basically just paint over any areas that you want to fix up. Adjust where it's sampling from. If it samples it from a silly place, as it often does, I've found. Um, so this is all sort of time consuming, fiddling sort of stuff, but it really makes a difference to the overall look of the image and the finished quality of the image, which I think is pretty important. So just as a demo, so I'd fix up all this sort of stuff here and all these marks and bits and pieces. So uh, the difference between this image and the first one that I did, um, Actually, this is even looking a bit too contrasty now. I looked at it again. I'm just going to bring the lights down a little bit more. Okay. Uh, so the first edit that I did, I remember I used the exposure slider to add more exposure to the image to try and make it a little bit lighter. And it's ended up looking quite washed out. All the data was towards the top side of the histogram, so it's all very bright. I've still got information down in the shadows, but the overall look of the image, there's not so much information as there is in the second edit that I did. So I'll switch between the first and second edit and just keep an eye on the histogram and see how different it looks. So both of them have information all the way from the shadows to the lights, but it's just because it's distributed in a different way, it brings out a different look in the shot. So I much prefer, obviously, the second edit. So just going to switch between the unedited version and the second edit. So that's unedited, quite flat, a bit cold, not very bright and vibrant. And the finished edit. Okay, so I hope that's helped to explain uh, how to get the most out of your image, especially if you've got a really sort of flat one that's shot in sort of flat overcast lighting. Um, there's definitely a lot of a lot of data in a raw file that you can play with and bring out using all these sliders, keeping an eye on the histogram. And not the same thing works for every single image that you take. So I think uh, in a lot of books and, and tutorials and stuff on the subject, they generally say that your tone curve should be S-shaped to create more contrast in the image. But that's not always the case because as you can see the tone curve here, it's not really what usually they say the ideal look of it should be um, because the tone curve is more of a secondary thing that, or how I use it it's a secondary thing to add 
to the image if you can't get the desired results with these sliders here. So um, yeah, I hope this has been helpful and uh, thanks for listening. And um, if you wanted to go check out my website, I've actually just updated it with a bunch of learning options for pet photographers. So there is uh, information on one-on-one -on -one mentoring, online mentoring, where we can go into editing and things like that. Um, I've got a new ebook coming out in the next couple of weeks, which is awesome, which I'm really excited about. Um, and of course, video tutorials too. So I've got a bunch of other video tutorials and I'm adding to them all the time. So if you go subscribe to my channel, that would be great.